fighting for social change, for democracy, for equality, for decades and decades. We come together in fields and factories, in village markets and supermarkets, in living rooms and board rooms. We share a common future, and we are here to find common ground so that we may help bring new dignity and respect to women and girls all over the world. We are here this evening to celebrate the women on whose shoulders we stand. It really is a revolution. The women are not waiting for permission to do their work. And to be a voice for the women that don't have a voice. It has to be an arc of history. No one can stop us. We will speak up for our rights and we will bring change through our voice. Our words can change the whole world because we are all together. We're back here and it is International Day to celebrate rural women. That's exactly how we're going to start off the program this morning. My guest is Suzanne lacan Batiste, Managing Director and Founder of Nature Seekers, Chairman as well. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming all the way. I know that today is a bit of a challenge, so I appreciate the fact. See, strong woman. <laughs> it <laughs> is a pleasure. It's so good to have you. And um, let me call out some of the things that you've done in the community. Radio producer, social welfare clerk, adult literacy tutor, ecotourism lecturer locally and regionally, honorary game warden, craft tutor. And I've seen some of the craft where you guys go from trash to cash. That's correct. Yes, you've also been featured on CNN yes. for the work that you've been doing. You've been honored. So it is my honor and privilege to present you to the nation, but I know you're no stranger to the nation. <laughs> Thank you so much. Tell us about the work that you've been doing to empower women specifically in the rural community. For oh, more than 15 years, I have been involved in doing a lot of teaching in terms of using natural resources within our communities to create sustainable livelihoods. These, this deal with a lot of six months of training, um, developing their interpersonal skills, their communication skills, learning more about the resources within the community. I still... And this there. is... Particularly from Valencia to Toco or across that whole Mayaro Manzanilla as well? Across the whole Manzanilla, Lupino, wherever. Okay, so it isn't, it isn't necessarily where you're from, it's it, just rural. Rural communities, nice. so mm -hmm. we can empower them with the necessary skill so they can become self-sustained and self-reliant, develop their confidence, their self-esteem, and it all deals with giving a commitment to the environment. Mm -hmm. So while they would protect the environment, it will be able to put bread and butter on their table and give them long-term and meaningful sustainability. In terms of protecting the environment, you are also a champion for the leatherback turtles, That's right? That's correct. It's been more than three decades when turtles were being killed in large numbers in our beaches in Maturo. It was a national concern. And for the first time in our country, government partner with a community to take care of this dilemma. Today, after decades, we have no more slaughtering. Mm -hmm. It's now one of the leading tourism sites in Trinidad for turtle watching and turtle conservation. Um, we have included a lot of our communities, children of poachers, ex-poachers, they are now ardent conservationists. It's now a win-win situation in that people are now employed throughout the year to take data apart from Ecotourism, we do a lot of scientific data to mm -hmm. understand more about the species, mm -hmm. their migratory pattern. A lot is being done at the community level in terms of empowerment and respect in our environment to create a legacy for all generations to come and view these dinosaurs in their natural environment. The okay. area is now safe yes. and it's now like an active maternity ward. We no longer <laughs> have a graveyard setting where turtles I are like being that. killed. I like that. I like that description. Was that why you uh, achieved the CNN Hero Award in 2009? Yes. I was recognized by Larry King live. I had a live interview with him. Um, I was one of the 30 from throughout the world that was downlisted for conservation and empowerment of women and communities. So I, it was really a great experience mm -hmm. being known throughout the world as a 
champion for turtle conservation and empowerment of our community. That was really a great experience because it tell community women that they too can step up and be champion in their own environment. Yes. And what would you tell to young girls, especially coming up in the rural communities? Because so many people live in rural communities and think, I need to get out. I yes. need to get to the urban city centers to make a living. But what would you say to them? Because you live in yes, Matura. Yes, I, I live in Matura all my life. I will tell them that the only limitation is what we set for ourselves. And being in the community, we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. The community needs us when all our resources from our community leave and go into the urban towns and so on. It's, it's a brain drain on our community. And as a result, you find a lot of community is not as strong as it should be. Yes. So I will tell them that they can make their dream realize in Nature Seekers, for instance, we have a lot of really um, young individuals who are accountants. They are, they are, we have um, IT specialists, and they work in Nature Seekers in our community. It's all about creating that opportunity for us to grow and develop as individuals and to extend our community with that passion. Yeah. And there's so much resources out there and people who believe in empowering community that we can tap into those resources to further empower our local community and create opportunities within our community as a result. I remember seeing a lot of young people, and we're going to be going across to Rishi in just a bit, so yes. this is like our remaining moments. Right. I remember seeing the Trash to Cash program, mm -hmm. a lot of young people making jewelry, is it? Yes. Out of, tell us a bit about that. Because of the Matura Beach, a lot of debris, especially glass bottles, that have a no resale value is collected on our beach. And every year we have tons of these bottles and often wonder what to do with it. So for the first time in our country, we have learned to turn our trash into cash. And this is done by our single mothers and unemployed women in our community where they have artistically developed the art where they t melt these glass bottles using oxygen and propane gas and forge them with their hands. Each bead is individually made by our women. And we make a lot of jewelry. It's our logo, our stamp is Turtle Warrior. Because when you wear one of these beads, one of these tokens that comes from the hands of our women, you support conservation. You support our turtles. You support our women. You empower us further so we can continue to aspire and create sustainability within our community. And where do you get the jewelry? Where, where is it sold? It's sold. We have a, a franchise in the Normandy Hotel. <gasps> Yes, we have some of the hotels <laughs> nice. um, that is actually selling our products. We have been selling a lot of our beads, and we have this market that is coming up, uh, the up market and yeah. the bits and okay, pieces. So it's getting out there. Very yeah. much. We're hundreds of our pieces, our anklets, our necklace, our yes. bracelets, our earrings. Trash the cash. Trash is the cash. So I am, I am going to promise you that we're going to bring some of those women on and look at the art that they're doing and the work that they're doing Excellent. in the coming weeks. Excellent. Thank you so much, You're Suzanne. You're very welcome, Thank and you. it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you again. I'm going to cross to Rishi.